Hello and welcome to GK videos. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate on how to set up and install an IX2 or IX2 hyphen DL. Uh, so the major difference what I what I find between IX2 or IX2 hyphen DL is uh, IX2 comes with uh, populated hard disks, whereas IX2 hyphen DL doesn't come with hard disks. So uh, if you want to just buy the device without hard disk, then you can go for IX2 hyphen DL. It just comes with the chases and uh, you can go ahead and buy your uh, you know maybe uh, the capacity whatever you like up to 3 terabyte or 4 terabyte uh, supported hard drives by Lenovo and you can uh, install those hard drives on the IX2 hyphen DL uh, displays unit and you can uh, start using the device so uh, the basic uh, information what you should know uh, let me just open up I've just opened up uh, couple of websites uh, so this is uh, the ix2 device which uh, look like and uh, if you're buying one or maybe you have one so this device would resemble the picture uh, what i'm showing on my desktop and um, it has two indicators the first one uh, the round one and a small asymmetry kind of it's uh, basically the status indicator so it would uh, the moment uh, you unpack the device and turn on the device in your network the device uh, the first led uh, should start blinking up for some moment and it should uh, get stable so this is the operating system functionality status indicator it would let you know whether the device is fully functional or uh, you know it has any problem if uh, it is solid white then the device is perfectly fine if it is uh, turned into red which means there is some problem with the hardware and you need to contact the support so and uh, the below one uh, this see this indicates the hard hard disk and uh, this would uh, blink blue and uh, it should be blinking for uh, more than you know 15 minutes 20 minutes at the time of uh, booting and uh, at the time of data transfer or access the uh, led should blink otherwise it should get stable all right so uh, that is the basic information um, what somebody should know and uh, the next thing what you should know is uh, the default IP address as you can see here I don't see any LCD display on this device let me open up this yes so uh, this is a tear down document I got it from uh, Lenovo.com website and uh, this is kind of uh, the future uh, the futures uh, the device has uh, the specification how it supports and what is the limitations uh, of this device basically it supports one gigabit uh, port ethernet port uh, and uh, the AC voltage 100 to 40 VAC that is fine and it supports RAID 1, RAID 0 and uh, JBOD which is uh, just a bunch of disks and it has uh, 256 MB RAM since it's very small device and 256 MB of RAM should be fine for it and it does support uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 as well as ESX 5.1 ISK and NAS all right so this is pretty much uh, the information uh, which I find on Lenovo.com website possibly uh, anybody can go to the website and find out uh, uh, what is the specification for this device and the supported uh, hard drives so uh, let me just open it again okay so as i was uh, speaking about uh, the default ip address so basically this device uh, what i see it takes uh, the apipa ip address by default the D, uh, the device would be in dhcp mode uh, uh, well uh, in that case what happens the moment you connect the nas device in your network or maybe a direct connection to your computer or a laptop uh, it would assign a self-assigned IP address uh, which is called APIPA IP address with the series of 169.254 right. and uh, you just need to make sure that you know you are able to find this IP address in your network or maybe you have a direct connection uh, to the NAS device along with your computer or laptop so uh, how do you discover the device uh, Lenovo recommends to install uh, Lenovo EMC storage manager software uh, to discover the device in that case what happens uh, this software tool you need to install on your client computer and um, 
you know any computer from for example you are connected the device in your network in a switch and you are using a static network in that case uh, you can install this uh, Lenovo storage manager uh, application on any of your uh, network connected computer and try to discover the device I'm gonna show you how you do it and uh, sometimes if uh, the network in a static network what happens uh, for some reason maybe you have firewall enabled in some uh, some place or maybe with various reasons this application sometimes might not be able to discover it so uh, uh, how do you find them so i'm gonna tell you that there are two commands which would be helpful in those cases so the first thing i'm gonna show you how you download the lenovo storage manager software let me just open it so uh, basically uh, the lenovo emc storage manager software was coming with the device while buying the product uh, with a cd but uh, these days uh, lenovo has stopped uh, uh, you know shipping the cd along with the nas unit and uh, they recommend customer to go through their website uh, then download the uh, software from uh, from there so uh, the website uh, is code.lenovoemc.com so once you are in the website let the website just open up okay just opening for me Maybe a little slow for me maybe uh, my internet connection is a little slow okay so this is the website I was talking about so uh, and uh, I'm gonna change uh, the region to English Asia Pacific uh, because uh, uh, I should change it because what happens when you uh, try to search a product uh, you need to select the right region uh, to get the right information so in my case for example uh, if you have a device and uh, you don't know about the product model or warranty details or the capacity you can find the ip i'm um, sorry the serial number on the sticker of the nas unit and uh, get the 10 digits alphanumeric number serial number and enter here find your product column tab and click the play button so it's going to tell you what is the product you have along with uh, the model the capacity and the warranty details in my case uh, I'll go to and the tabs to see Lenovo EMC Lenovo and iMega so there is no much difference um, what I find uh, the main difference is that iOmega has you know whatever the device been sold with iOmega brand so those are listed here and uh, the Lenovo brand is something whatever the device uh, for example ix 4300 d or the easy media stuff so that is uh, a Lenovo products with developed and a Lenovo EMC is the older product of iOmega but the operating system being developed by Lenovo and EMC so those products will be rebranded and whatever the new products are coming you can see a Lenovo EMC tag on it so that is the main difference nothing much so I can find my product under iOmega so let me just check that uh, it should be under desktop network storage and here it is at store center ix2 slash ix2 hyphen dl let me just click on that and uh, this is the page which has opened for the support uh, articles the first one is how do i install and use my product so you'll have a lot of tutorials just click on more you would find a lot of tutorials the and the frequently asked questions that should be answered here with more answers you can find a lot of uh, other faqs so uh, for example you are using an ix2 hyphen dl discless device so this is the link which is gonna show you what are the drives actually being uh, supported with this nas device with this discless nas units so let me just open it maybe i can just show you what are the drives uh, this device uh, device being supported so for example sata hard disks it's western digital seagate and western digital with uh, up to four terabyte hard disks which is really great so four terabyte which got released uh, just a couple of months before and uh, now uh, the vendor lenovo is supporting that it's really good so these are the uh, hard disks which are being supported with uh, the disk class unit of ix2 device so somebody can buy one or any of the drives uh, with uh, various capacity and he can use it 
so uh, in this case for example you are buying hard drive just make sure you are buying same capacity hard drives and same model same brand that should give you a better performance because um, with different uh, brands sometimes it works but that is not that might not recommended by the support or maybe uh, you cannot use uh, two terabyte drive with one terabyte because that you cannot create a raid for example you want to create a raid one you will not be able to create that so make sure you are using the same capacity okay just let, let's go back again okay so uh, so I was talking about uh, the Lenovo EMC storage manager software which I can find under the download and updates uh, category the first one is firmware version 4.0.8 which is the latest firmware version for iox2 and iox2 hyper dl uh, in my case I'll be looking for the second link which uh, says Lenovo EMC storage manager for windows version 1.4.4 this would be the latest one let me click on this and here we go so uh, this is the page I where I can download uh, basically the storage manager client uh, it comes with 32 bit 64 bit and it also bundles uh, with uh, Twunky 7 for 32 bit and 64 bit uh, Twunky is basically, uh, if anybody doesn't know about it, uh, Twunky is again, uh, you know, what you say, like the video server, which means that uh, if you have, for example, videos and audio files stored on the NAS unit and um, you enable uh, the uh, media on the NAS device, in that case, what happens, the Twunky uh, application would aggregate those videos and audios in one web page where you uh, that will be listed all the you know video files as well as audio files in um, you know kind of um, format with index you can select any file you want to play over you know online or maybe over the browser you can play the video it's just like youtube for example youtube you access and uh, you see a lot of videos you click on the video it gets played so the likewise uh, if you don't want to get into the nas and play those videos you can just access uh, the nas uh, content the videos and audios using the 27 or uh, 20 uh, media application from your client from the internet explorer or maybe you know google browser and that should you know list down all the uh, videos and audio files available uh, available on the nas device and you can better play those so that is the you know use of Twunky uh, media server so you can download it and i have already downloaded it, so uh, i already installed that so i'm going to show you how does that work so now that uh, I have connected uh, the NAS unit, just for your information, uh, I'm using a small switch uh, with 192.168 storage uh, IP address. So uh, this is the IP address being uh, uh, reserved for my NAS unit. So my NAS is directly connected now with the uh, computer and I've just turned the NAS on right now. So. Uh, the LED for example the LED which I've shown you so the first LED took me around 10 to 15 minutes to get stable and the hard disk LED it was blinking for some moment and now it's it got stable so now what I have to do is I have to open up the Lenovo storage manager software and uh, let me see if that can discover the device Okay, it is unable to discover it right now. So let me just search it. All right, for some reason it is not uh, it is not able to find the IP address. Okay, it's a good thing that you know I can show you the other methods, but 99% does that work? Okay, so uh, since it doesn't work this time, uh, possibly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through some other commands. So let me just open up the command prompt. And what basically you should be doing now is that on the sticker, if you can find on the NAS unit, you will find the MAC address as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a command which is ARP minus A. So ARP minus A, it should show me all the IP address along with the MAC address of the devices connected in my network. In this case, let me just run the command. It's ARP minus A. Then get more. So you can see the first 
uh, where the interface is 169.254.20.20 so this is my IP address of my laptop which I have assigned so uh, basically I'm gonna tell you one more thing here for example let me just open up my network card here we go for example if you have a static network and how do you configure this way so for example you have a static network with uh, any series I'm using 192.168 that is fine and you want to add a virtual IP address in this case uh, like I said uh, the NAS device does use uh, 169.254 series IP address and your network would be 192 or 10.10 10 or whatever in that case uh, you need to add a virtual IP address of 169 series uh, in that case what happens is you should be able to uh, dial the NAS unit from your uh, computer you don't have to connect directly it doesn't matter or though it is connected directly once you get the IP address using ARP minus A command you should be able to browse the NAS unit using the web interface so for that what you got to do is you need to open up the TCP IP v4 and let the uh, settings be here otherwise if uh, you are directly connected you can just click on obtain an IP address automatically so uh, in that case what happens this your computer or maybe this computer which I'm using should get 169 series IP address because that is up IP address in my case since I'm using a static IP address let me click on advanced and here I can add uh, one more virtual IP address as you can see I've already added 169.254.20.20 so uh, uh, maybe you know if you want to add one more just click on it and you can add any IP address as virtual so it should uh, work as you have the second NIC port available for you so maybe this is how you add and it would come automatically click on add it should add an entry but since I've already added 20.20 I'm not gonna add one more time so uh, let me just go back to the command prompt and here you see this is my interface and the first IP address 169.254.218.52 so this is basically uh, the NAS IP address how do I find it it's very interesting if you check uh, the MAC address or physical address of a Lenovo iMega device that starts with 00 hyphen d0 so this is a thumb rule or maybe uh, you can use it because in my case many times I don't really use Lenovo EMC storage manager for each time but I know that all the devices of Lenovo iMega that the MAC address starts with double zero hyphen d0 so uh, you can check the MAC address on the sticker itself where you can find the 10 days I'm sorry uh, the serial number along with the MAC address as well so you can see the type is dynamic and it's double zero t zero so just to make sure this is the right IP address what I'm gonna do I just copied it let me just open up my browser and I'm gonna enter it and let me see if that works for me so maybe I can open up a new tab and enter the IP address and here we go it has opened up and the first page which has opened for me enable security so this is by default comes up with the 4.0.8 operating system or firmware version of the NAS unit so this is something the you know it is asking you to create an admin account before you log in so many times what happens earlier firmware version were firmware version like 3.3.2 or 3.2.6 uh, it was not prompting for any username password and uh, the users were able to you know get into the web console directly and sometimes you know you never know how to create a username and this is how the problem comes up so it's a I would say the customization was really good at this time customer doesn't have to navigate uh, the web pages again and again and uh, just go through the user manuals every time to create it so it default asks for uh, the user to create the administrator account before he logs into the web console so in my case i'm going to create the admin account and the local network encryption ssl not required for me remote uh, network encryption yes i would need it so just click on apply so now what it's going to do it has created uh, 
uh, it has enabled the security so HTTPS and this is a known issue actually since the certificate issue just comes up uh, then click on continue now it should uh, log in with the account admin so it's going to the setup page and here you can see the admin account we logged in so each time I log in now or somebody try to access the web interface of the NAS unit uh, it should prompt for the username password alright so now that I just logged into the device the first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the IP address so that in my network everybody can access that so how do I do that I'll go to network then click on network icon maybe it would take some time for me because this is the first time I'm using and uh, it might take a couple of moments I'm not sure all right now the page has opened up so as you can see uh, the automatically configure all network settings being already selected which means uh, uh, you know this is in DHCP mode by default which explains that and let me just open up it again okay so here the DNS by default comes up 8888 and 8844 these two IP address are the DNS IP address of Google in my case for example if I'm not I'm not having a DNS server in my network and this device doesn't allow me to configure the network settings without the DNS servers so I can use uh, the IP address 8888 and 8844 and the uh, best thing uh, you know with uh, this device particularly because this device has the latest firmware version let me just show you that uh, later let me just change the IP address first to my network IP address so in this case for example if you have the DNS servers in your network you can use your DNS server but since I do not have a DNS server in my network I'm gonna leave this as it is 0.20 should be fine and I am not gonna use the gateway for me because I have very small network and should be fine Yes, I do. That is fine. It's HTTP uh, message, and I can see now the IP address has changed. Maybe let me just open it again. I can open up what Yes. So now the IP address has changed as you can see and I can log into the device with the IP address, username and password upset maybe the password from yes perfect so now I'm able to log into the NAS unit so I was able to change the IP address and the one more thing I was telling the system uh, I'm sorry the system firmware or maybe the device firmware where do you find it so if you go to all futures or maybe click on common so this is the default page you're gonna get you can find system status click on that and uh, it, it's gonna tell you what is the firmware version you are having in so I'm having the 4.0.8 firmware version which is the latest one I can confirm that by going through uh, the Lenovo website maybe here uh, let me go back and uh, that should be the latest firmware version and uh, where should I check it I should check it under the download uh, category here we go download and updates firmware version 4.0.8 is the latest one in your case for example if you have a new device and that does come with 3.3.2 or other older version firmware you can go to support.lenovo.com uh, I'm sorry support.lenovoemc.com website and select your product and come here you will find your latest firmware version you can download and upgrade it so uh, 
this is this is all about uh, the setup and uh, installation of the NAS unit and uh, thank you so much for watching and watch my other video which explains on overview of the iX2 device thank you so much for watching